So, this problem formulation is going to be modeled as a two-stage stochastic optimization. There is a formal way of doing this in the literature and you will find several uh, books and uh, uh, probably even tutorials online. However, we keep this fairly straightforward and just give you an idea of what exactly happens in these two stage stochastic optimization. So, now let me just quickly recap the scenario in terms of a timeline. Okay. So, we begin by displaying this is the first, I am going to draw a timeline. Okay. So, this is a timeline. So, we begin by giving the 5 options here and the 5 options here. So, you know what are the 5 various options on the website. So, this is the website. So, so the app first goes to the website, it downloads restaurant A and restaurant B's 5 choices and the costs, okay, dollar costs. So, it uses ratings of 9.2 here and 8.9. And it also uses the dollar cost of items. In addition, ditto, in addition, it also uses the individual preference rating for each item. Okay, it uses for both. Based on that information and the fact that it knows that the restaurant is going to select 2 out of the 5 with equal probability. So, that means it could pick 1 and 2, 1 and 3, 1 and 4, 1 and 5 or it could pick 2 and 5, 2 and 4, 2 and 3 or 3 and 4, 3 and 5 or 4 and 5. All these 10 options with equal probability. That is an information that it assumes and that is what the website also tells you that it is going to select one of this 5 with certain probability, with any one of those 5 and in fact, any 2 of those 5 with equal probability. Okay, That is what it is going to tell you. Once you do that, once so once you go to the website, you download and say, okay, I like you to go and search restaurant A and restaurant B. It uses the ratings from a other users and it also looks at the cost because remember you have a constraint that your total cost must be less than $60 and you also want to look at individual ratings. So, your next, the first decision is here and now is to decide what you are going to pick, restaurant A or restaurant B. So, that is your first decision. After that, you once you pick a restaurant, then you need to decide which menu option. So, this is where you pay the dollar 30 is paid. Okay, once you make the decision, and then the two options are revealed. Okay, then you pick the dessert, the appetizer, the main course and the drink. Okay, and place an order. Okay, So, that is what you need to do. So, that is what is the timeline. So, that is the timeline of activities. right? So, first the website gets revealed and you pick the user ratings from a popular site. You incorporate the cost of items. You have a constraint of $60 and then you would look at your individual preference ratings for all the 5 items and you will come up with some type of a, a uh, some type of a number between 0 and 5 for a preference rating. Then you use that information to make here and now decisions. You also use the information that you are going to select one of these 5, I am sorry, 2 of the 5 with equal probability. And you need to make a decision, should I go with A or should I go with B. Then you pay the $30 fee. Once you pay the $30 fee, the 2 options are revealed and then you need to select which appetizer which main course, which dessert and which drink you are going to select. Now, this is often formulated as a two-stage stochastic program. I am going to change the color uh, to red. Okay, so, I am going to do the first stage decision. It is called here and now and I am going to decide whether it is going to be restaurant A or B. 
The inputs to that are, like I said, the user rating, okay, the probabilities. We, for us, they're all equally likely, but in general, you need to know the uh, characteristics of uh, uh, the random quantities, and then the costs and then the preferences. So, these all go into the here and now decision. Not just that, there is another decision that goes in here and that is if you picked A, then I would say, okay, now we make the second set of decision which is, that is why it is called a two-stage stochastic program. The first decision which is here and now, you decide as A or B. In the second stage, you pick the appetizer and you select the main course, dessert and drink okay. among the ones that get revealed. So, this one is a random event occurs. Now, there is nothing random in to pick A or B, but then once you pick an appetizer, now that information is also returned to B. So, there are multiple scenarios. So, once you are given whether it is A or whether it is B, you create the various scenarios and in each scenario, you are going to pick an appetizer, a main course, a dessert and drink and it kind of gives back the average preference rating. So, that information, so it does, it uses all the preferences, pushes it out here it also uses the probabilities and the cost. It pushes all that information down to this level. It does not push the user rating because it does not care about user rating because you have already made that here and now decision of selecting A or B. So, once you have selected that, you push down the probabilities or all the possible uh, scenarios and also their probabilities. In our case, they are all equally likely. You push down the costs and you push down the preferences to the second stage. In the second stage, given all these, it creates all the possible scenarios and then it computes the average preference rating and sends it back here. Now, here you go back to the here and now decision. You look at the user rating and the average preference rating. So, I am going to use a slightly different color and say, well, I use for this to make the decision, I put a question mark. I am going to use the user rating and the average preference rating in combination to make that here and now decision. Okay? And once we make the decision, depending on which one gets revealed, we can go back to see what was done here, what was the choices here and that is going to be how we are going to proceed right now. Okay? So, now let us see how do we formulate this problem, stochastic optimization formulation. So, we will incorporate the total preference okay, uh, into making this decision because we cannot just decide based on only the user rating. Remember last time we saw if you only took the user rating, where we are probably going to pick restaurant A. We also want to get an idea of the preference ratings, but the preference rating is uncertain because we do not know which option is going to get revealed or which two options are going to get revealed. Okay? So, that is what I am saying here. The preference rating is random and depends on which options are revealed. Now, pretend like you have this app and you use this everywhere you go. So, in some sense, your preference ratings expected value seems to be a reasonable choice. Okay? Uh, so, uh, so, you know, instead of uh, you are outsourcing your decision to your app to figure out what to do. Okay, so, let us say I have a little stochastic program there. It will crunch some numbers and tell you, okay, hey, here is uh, the expected value. This is what I would expect as my total preference and it keeps doing this over and over again. Now, recall that there are 10 scenarios. Why do I know there are 10 scenarios? Well, I have 5 options from which I choose 2. So, 5 choose 2, 5 C2 is 5 factorial divided by 3 factorial times 2 factorial. So, that is 120 divided by uh, 6 times 2 which is equal to 10. Okay? So, so that is the reason we have 10 choices. So, let me just 
tell you what the 10 choices are. Options 1 and 2, 1 and 3, 1 and 4, 1 and 5, 2 and 3, 2 and 4, 2 and 5, 3 and 4, 3 and 5 or 4 and 5. These are your 10 choices. Okay? So, these are your 10 different scenarios that could occur. Now, what you want to do is you want to maximize the sum of the review ratings and the expected value of the total preference rating. Now, why should you pick the sum of the review ratings and the expected value of the total preference? By a total preference, I mean the sum of the ratings, the expected value of the appetizer rating, the main course rating, the drink rating, and the dessert rating. So, all that. So, you're going to get a maximum of 20 points there. This would be out of 20 this would be out of 10. So, you get a total of out of 30. Now, you could say why should I maximize the sum of those two? I could do something different. I could possibly do uh, you know two times this number and this 20 so that they are both equal or I could do four times this and that. So, that depends on now your personal preference and I am going to pick just the sum of those two, but from a personal uh, standpoint, you could think of something like this. If you are someone who says, well, I really care about what others think of the restaurant and I am going to give a lot more weight to that, sure, by all means. On the other hand, you might think, well, I know what I like and what I do not. I do not really care what the other people think, so I might give a lot more weight to this guy. So, that is completely up to you. Okay? Now, it turns out that in the here and now decision that we talked about, we have to decide the restaurant, but for that, we are going to incorporate an expected value of the preference rating. Now, there is also a second stage like I was telling you earlier. Given a scenario, so like I said, let us say I do a rest, uh, say 2 and 5 options are, are revealed for restaurant A, then you need to decide which of these choices to make. So, there are two stages. First stage you decide which restaurant, second stage you decide which of the choices you want to select. Now, there is also a constraint you have to be sure that the budget does not exceed $60. Okay? Remember that the $30 you pay is counted towards the 60. So, you really do not have to worry about the 30. The 30 is there just to tell you that you have to make this here and now decision. If that was not there, what let us say it was 0, what we would do then is we would try both restaurants and see what is available for today and then pick the one that is better. Okay? So, then it does not come in the same framework of a two stage stochastic optimization. Okay? There you are re revealing. Then after that, it is not really much of a deal. It is a much simpler problem if everything gets revealed. So, the $30 is there just to illustrate that while there is an uncertainty there and I have to make a decision and how do I go about doing that. Now, when you solve the problem, you will actually go in reverse order because we do need the scenarios and we do need the average cost in order to be able to calculate. So, we will actually go in the reverse starting with the scenario. So, now let us see what all scenarios. So, these are the 10 scenarios. right? We enumerated this earlier. So, we are now talking about restaurant A alone and not restaurant B. And if you look at the optimal objective function, now, what is that? This is the optimal score. This value is the four numbers together. So, for example, if options 1 and 2 are revealed, now this is what we had before. Remember, we also had this 15.5. I am going to go back and show you that. Okay. So, this is restaurant A. If you look at restaurant A and let us say options 1 and 2 are revealed right here, 1 and 2, 1 and 2. We did the calculation. We found that this one first time this happened, we had exceeded our budget. So, we went back, resolved the problem and then we said, okay, 15.5 and my budget is we are well within the budget uh, and therefore, um, that is not well within, we are within uh, and uh, we are going to go ahead with this costing us 15.5. So, if this gets revealed, if this scenario is what gets revealed, then we are going to be uh, uh, adding 15.5 points for our preferences. So, we go back to where we were. We go back here and say, if options 1 and 2 are revealed, then it will cost us 15.5. And then our choices is to pick the first drink, second appetizer, first main course, first dessert. Okay? 
So only the appetizer is second. If you go back here, that's basically what we do, right? First drink, second appetizer, first main course, first dessert. The only thing that we uh, do second is for the appetizer. So others all from option one. So that's what we're doing right here. Similar fashion, we, what if scenarios one and three are revealed? We could do a similar calculation and we could say, okay, uh, if we were in that situation, they say one and three are revealed, then what will you do? Well, you have this here, one and three are revealed. So this guy, okay, so let's say one and three options are revealed. Then what happens is uh, the total cost is then going to be equal to uh, 12.8, all right? Now, similarly, if options one and four are revealed, you can do a quick calculation. So notice that you, in our case, what I ended up doing is wrote a little octave program. The octave program will actually look at the various options and pick the one that is minimum among all the options. Now, if you had larger than this, you could write a mathematical program to actually do this in a careful manner. So in here, if you look between one and three, from option three, uh, I will pick the drinks. From option one, I will pick the appetizer and the main course. And from option three, I will pick the dessert. Likewise, if I had one and four options revealed instead of one and two or one and three, then my optimal score is this, okay? So if you look at it, uh, there you will pick options one, one, four, and one, okay? So somewhat like in the first case, except now this time we're picking the main courses choice, okay? So notice how it is a little bit different. Although one is common in all of them, although one is common in all of them, in not in all cases you're actually picking one, okay? Uh, even in the main course choice, in appetizer, or in the drinks, you don't always pick one, even though it gets revealed. That is because you're trying to do two things. You are trying to maximize your optimal score and you're also trying to be within your $60 budget. So if you're doing both, it's likely that the same choice does not show up all the time, okay? So if you look at it, it's not only that, let me just go back a little bit. If you look at this, it's not only that option one has the best, the costs are going all over the place and the ratings are also all over the place, okay? So for example, in the main course, you should have picked it all the time because it's the best among the four, okay? You should also almost always pick the drink, okay? Because it's the best. Now, if you look at it, the drinks and main courses, more often than not, okay? If you see three out of the four, you do pick it as the main one, okay? Only in two other cases, you don't, which kind of makes sense, okay? Uh, now, if you look at the options without a one, so let's say two and three get revealed. Similarly, you get a number 15.1, and then you would use these four as your four choices, okay? Now, interestingly, in the next one, look at this. You, if you, op, if you get options two and four, your total score is 14.4, and everything you pick is option two. So let's go back and see what's going on between two and four. So if you're back here between two and four, so this is four and this is two. So back here two and four, you're always picking two more than four. Now notice that uh, in, in case of the appetizer, two is better than four. In case of a dessert, two is better than four. But when they are better, they are significantly better. Okay, so you're clearly picking those. However, if you look at the main course, okay, uh, four is better than two, and the drink as well, four is better than two. But then if you notice, the betterment is only slight compared to what it is in the dessert and the appetizer. And, you know, cost-wise, obviously, if you went that way, you would probably incur a higher cost because this guy is more expensive and uh, uh, did I pick the right ones? Yeah, so I'm sorry. So here, there's a huge reduction, there's a huge reduction in cost, okay, not so much here, but those things kind of add up. So therefore, you are really picking option two, although you would have picked 
2424 if budget was not a constraint. Okay? So this is a constrained type of situation and you have to be a little bit careful when you make your choices. Now in 25, uh, you notice it's 15.1 uh, and then your choices are 2, 5, 5 and 5. So now the 2 which was so lucrative before is now all of a sudden picked only once because 5 seems to be doing way better. So it really depends on what options you get, 3 and 4, 3 and 5, 4 and 5 likewise have these as your costs. So essentially your best bet is if 1 and 5 show up, if 1 and 5 show up your cost is going up. I'm sorry, not your cost, your benefit is as high as 16.7. That is probably the best one so far. Uh, however, if you had the other choices, it's kind of going like this. And if you look at these numbers, again, you don't really see a common pattern. However, these are mainly because of two reasons, like I said. One is you do have a constraint on your cost, and that really pushes your decisions one way or the other. And secondly, uh, you also have to make sure that. Uh, uh, your preferences are appropriate. Okay? Now, let us look at the same situation with restaurant B. In restaurant B, we are going to look at, I am going to change the color in for a second, we are going to look at what happens with restaurant B. Now, let us look at the ninth scenario. Okay? And uh, oh, I, I do want to say one other thing I forgot in restaurant A. So, if I took the average, now all these are equally likely. So you are equally likely to get any of these optimal scores. And then I take their average, their mean. Well, why do we take the average? That's because they're all equally likely. Each of them has a probability of one tenth. You could have formally done 15.5 times one tenth plus 12.8 times one tenth and so on, like we normally do to compute the expected value. But notice that that is exactly the same as taking the averages. Okay, So you do 15.5 plus 12.8 and so on till 15.4 divided by 10, you are doing exactly the same thing. I just wanted to remind, I forgot to mention that earlier, uh, but you could actually obtain the average score of 14.88. Likewise, in the restaurant B situation, the average score is 15.44 and the ninth scenario, so that is this guy, 3 and 5 is what we saw earlier and it has an optimal score of 16.7. Coincidentally, I, actually these numbers are completely made up. It is the exact same 16.7 we had here as our best score. So the best score actually is no different between the two cases, okay, which is uh, somewhat interesting. Uh, now, so now let us say we had options 3 and 5 revealed. Then we saw earlier that we pick 3 as our drinks choice and main course and dessert and appetizer of 5. So let us just go and confirm that that is the case. right? So drinks and main course from option 3, dessert and appetizer from option 5. In fact, uh, this would even give us $7 to spare, but it would make our uh, uh, ratings extremely high. All right? Now, turns out that here as well, like for example, so this is this, so you would make these choices. Um, uh, here if you notice, again, we do not see any major patterns. Like for example, now here if you look at it, I do want to point that out. You would always pick in any case drinks from choice 1, okay? uh, as long as there is a 1. Right? None of the other choices has a 1, as long as you pick, you pick drink from 1. So let us go and investigate how the first choice of drinks in restaurant B actually looks like. Okay? Uh, if you see here, uh, turns out that the first drink choice, and I am going to erase some of this just to show you. The first drink choice actually is the highest of the lot. Okay? And it is also reasonably inexpensive. So it kind of makes sense that you are picking option 1. However, it is not that obvious because the other drink choices are not terribly cheaper. I mean, for example, but terribly weaker. So, for example, this drink is only slightly worse. This one is only slightly worse. This guy is also the same $8. So, the fact that, you know, uh, that it is low enough and if you look at this guy, so it is not obvious, it is not, you know, intuitive or obvious that you should have always picked choice 1 because if you look at it, there are some cheaper choices with almost the same rating 
as our original choice. So, it is not clear why it actually selected uh, option 1 every single time for drink. Okay? So, these are interesting things that do not get revealed unless you do a thorough optimization analysis. Okay? That is why many times we prefer not to eyeball and let us go for this type of a deal. Okay? It is very important to run through an optimization routine in order for you to select what is the best choice. Okay? So, similarly here as well we can compute these assuming that these options are revealed, all of them are equally likely with probability 1 tenths and therefore, the total average score is 15.44. If I went a little fast explaining this, since it is exactly the same as restaurant A, I did not really take a whole lot of time trying to explain each and every line, but I think I would highly recommend that you go ahead and look at this situation. You always uh, for all the choices between 2 and 4, 4 seems to dominate 2. So, let us take another look at that. I mean, it is useful to look for these patterns and see what is going on. Between 2 and 4, let us take a look. Between 2 and 4, um, oh, let me just erase this color. So, this one mark 2 is here and 4. Okay. Now, notice that uh, 2 is better than 4 in all except the drink. In the drink alone, uh, 4 is better. However, 4 is so much cheaper than the drink 2 that it is possible that we had a problem with the dollar cost for the, for the drink and therefore, I mean reaching the $60 limit and it is possible that it picked this guy, this guy, this guy and this guy. Okay? So, that is probably what happened. All right. So, now, uh, we, we move on and say, okay, now how are we going to solve this problem? Right? We need to solve the problem. So, we have two choices. This is the expected value of expected value of total preference and the maximum number this could be is 20. So, out of 20 on average, I am going to get 14.88 and this is the restaurant choice. So, this is on 10. So, this maximum is 10, this maximum is 20. And this number 9.2 plus 14.88, which is the average. So, this is where we are actually solving. So, this is where we go in this situation. This information gets input. So, I am going to just erase this. Oops. So, that is okay. This information gets input and we are saying, okay, which is a better choice? This is where we are making the here and now decision. This is only now that we are actually solving the problem. So, now we are looking at this and saying okay, between 8.9 plus 15.44 versus 9.2 plus 14.88, which is better? Turns out that A is smaller and you should actually select restaurant B. Okay? So, that is what this tells you. If you select restaurant B, you're, you, on average you are going to be doing better. Okay? Now, it turns out that although the reviewer's rating is better for restaurant A than restaurant B, based on your preferences, you could be better off with restaurant B. So, now it is a question of we are really trading off between your preferences versus the restaurant. So, your preference means what you like among items. Like for example, if you like uh, the uh, fruit cake you know, versus you do not like that and whether or not you like the ice cream, your preference in general versus the restaurant preference, you are kind of taking a combination of the two. So, it really trades off between the reviewers ratings against our own preferences of food based on past restaurant behavior. Okay? Now, once we select restaurant B, this is important, we go back to this table. So, we actually have, we know what to do. So, we have already made this calculation. So, let us say we are in restaurant B okay, and I believe I have that example. Let us say options 2 and 3 get revealed. Then what will we do? So, now let us say you actually picked restaurant B and options 2 and 3 got revealed. I am going to use a different color so that uh, we are here. So, we let us say options 2, sorry, options 2 and 3 get revealed. Then what this one says is you will have to pick this 3, you will have to pick except for the dessert where you pick from option 2, all the others you pick from option 3. Okay? So, Right, except for the dessert that you pick from option 2, all the others you pick from option 3 and that is the optimal thing to do. So, you do not have to recalculate it, you already have made this calculation which is wonderful. Okay? So, in the second stage, you already have the solution because you have already created that scenario. 
And many times in stochastic programming, this is a luxury that we have. So once we get to what gets revealed, okay, once we get once we get to the situation where we may have to make a decision in the second stage, we've already done that calculation. So you just go, take a look, and make this decision. Okay, so one more time, I'm just summarizing by saying a two-stage optimization, what happens is in the first stage, you make here and now decisions. For that, you get inputs from the costs in terms of what you have to make in the here and now decisions, as well as the average cost. You could do something more fancier than the average, by the way, from the second stage and say, okay, here's the average, now which decision I make. Once you make that here and now decision, now when the uh, uncertainty is revealed, you look at what is the best choice under those scenarios and you make that decision in the second stage. Okay? So this brings us to the end. I do have some concluding remarks that I will make about this and uh, in the next lecture. Thank you.